other cards I'd be looking at is Effect Failure and Ghost Ogre are worth considering. I'm not crazy about Troll and Lockbird because if they can get into Bardice, they yeah. can still set up a board. And so I'd prefer to have the things that stop them carrying away with their combo. Definitely um. agree. I think, uh, as you said, Vader, Ogre, and Lancia are pretty safe. Ogre is like not amazing because of the like uh, Marco they can hide a lot of their cards yeah and also Marco is maining like triple dolphin and triple connector so that's an issue yeah. but if you are able to hold it I think that if you wait for the LP then it can't even resolve so since he doesn't have the zone where it points to there's also hitting summon sorceress yeah it's really strong there are a lot of options for so it, it depends on on that but as you said, the safest is probably Lancia, because... I, I think we take out Cherries, bring it Lancia, yeah. and also bring in Valor, maybe taking out Twin Twisters. Yeah, yeah, he's like, surprisingly, Alberto is actually maining both Triple Twin Twister and Triple MST, so Mystical Space Typhoon, yeah. which we have not seen in a while, so those doesn't seem to be that good in this matchup, and it wouldn't surprise me if he just maybe sided out those along with the ch uh, Winter Cherries for yeah. nine Antrops. So. Marco obviously is planning on going second here, yeah. right? What are you going to be siding in tonight? So he has a really, really cool side deck because he's siding a double evolution pill, just the one copy, Amazing. because he has all these uh, options to send Dark Monster to the graves. He cited Overtex, um, uh, the name... Uh, Plotless. Yeah, Plotless. Yeah. So he can search it. And the target he brings out is either the second one or the Dino Wrestlers. Those are amazing. In Which this is really nice. Yeah. Uh, we see the players drawing their hands here. We're just going to wait for them to load in. It looks like Marco has a drill in Lockbird. Oh, that's surprising that he decided to actually side it. I feel like you usually, if you're a combo deck, you usually just want to ignore what Sky Striker is doing. Yes. Because, sure, you can draw and lock, but it's not like they usually open incredibly. Uh, well, Alberto has to rely on Metal for Fusion. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, his hand uh, doesn't seem to be that good. He drew both the Metal for Fusion and the Foolish Burger Goods. Yeah. So well, this draw is really important. He can fool Burial Goods and send an Engage. And yeah. then if he Widow Anchors on Marco's turn and survives, sure. then he can still... But it's really slow. Play that's the it's thing. very slow. So Drown and Lock comes down. It's probably one of the best Drown and Locks, to be honest, you can have against the deck. And let's see what Alberto drew. There's some really nice interactions for Sky Striker against Drown and Lockbird once multi-roll has resolved. Because had Alberto been able to draw something like Hornet Drones, he could have activated it on the response window, yep. being turn player. And then Drown and Lockbird couldn't have been used. Yep. He would have been able to give himself a bit more space. It does okay. look like here that he's not drawing any more anyway, though. Yeah, it doesn't. And uh, something worth mentioning is that Marco did open one of the Cold by the Grave, which matches perfectly with the Ash Blossom in Alberto N. Yeah. Um. Summon Photon Trash here. So he doesn't use the... Okay. Let's see. He draws into the second DDR. And his old is definitely going to get... <laughs> That's definitely getting hit by yeah, anger, <laughs> yeah. And it looks like he might be safe here. And uh, since uh, Alberto actually uses Winter Cherries in game one, he knows that Marco only plays one is old, so he can actually use it on the summon if he wants. I'm, yeah. So we're sending for costs. Yeah. So he doesn't he doesn't use the first effect, which is kind of odd. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's odd because this is kind of a grind game. You can see that they both have like limited resources kind of so let's see alberto has both the we see ash blossom being dropped we're gonna yeah. see called and response. we're gonna see the widow anchor in response so chaining four and his all is gonna be negated but now the ddr is definitely live because he has both the cloak and the option to banish with uh, the phoenix blade yes but that still hurts a lot, so we're going to have to see what he wants to do with this. Uh, the line seems to be Summon Sorcerer, but we can see that Alberto actually has a Ghost Ogre in hand. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. And this is what we were saying about Ghost Ogre, is that Ghost Ogre on Summon Sorcerers is really impactful in this matter. Yeah. 
Like, Summon Sorceress is a key combo piece rather than just an extender. Definitely. But, but to be honest, uh, like, Marco didn't use uh, his old effect on Summon, so that might be an indication that he's playing around uh, Ghost Ogre. But yeah. now that Alberto only has one card, maybe he doesn't even feel like he needs to anymore. But I mean, see. what option would he have? If, if you have your opponent on Ogre and you're like, I'm pretty sure that's what he's got, what are you going to do with this hand to play around it? You can try and manage it. Like, You know that they don't have anything relevant in hand, most likely. So the multi-roll is the... You just have to prevent the multi-roll, and then if they draw into like an engage or raid, that's about it. Sure. So getting rid of the multi-roll seems like a priority. Yeah. So DDR happens, then Boots gets banished. They're most likely going to get uh, Brigadine. Brigadine is really good here. It's yep. an extra monster. We could make a tree material Saryuza. <laughs> Our Saryuza is effect monsters, right? Yeah. It's... Yeah. No, it's, uh, Saryuza, no, it's, I don't think it's just No, it's just monsters, yeah. yeah. So he could make it's a tree material. Names. He can, but... He won't draw anything. But yeah. It's a, just a big monster. Uh, I wouldn't do it, but... Yeah, yeah. He can. <laughs> he, he can, he can. I mean... I mean, if he makes summon sorceress here, he has a monster that it points to, he can get a monster yeah, from It that. seems like it's the obvious choice, so I don't see him walking away from this, even though it could get ugly real quick. Yeah. I mean, he's still in a good position here, because the Sky Striker deck doesn't have the ability to apply a lot of pressure. Yeah, but the thing is now he has the engage back, and he is left with no cards in hand. So I, I think like this is looking really good for Alberto now. Yeah. So Alberto will have two spell cards in Graveyard. So he just needs to draw any other spell card and he can get his engage yeah. for the maximum value. Is there anything else Marco can do here? He's already used the banish effect Not really. of both of his Phantom Knights. Yeah, the only thing he can get is, is like get back is a Phoenix Blade, but that's about it, so well, he can get back Phoenix Blade, and then he can summon out Isolde using DDR. But he already is... Does he have another DDR in Oh, yeah, he does have yeah, another he, DDR. Yeah, he drew a DDR for turn, I think. Yeah. But I don't think that really gets him anywhere. Yeah. Seems like he's going to be banishing. And Phoenix Blade is such an impactful card, right? It is. Like, it, it is what allows these Dark Warrior decks to gain so much advantage. Yeah. It is definitely, like, one of those cards which people basically forgot about for, like, 10 or more years, and then it suddenly came back probably stronger than it ever was. So. Yeah. Okay, and so... What, what do you think Marco is thinking about here? Is he considering whether or not yeah, he wants a special summon? I mean, or? he doesn't have too many options because he already used all the Phantom Knights and he's only playing one is old. Yes. I wonder what would have happened if he used the on summon is old effect. Because then there is a word in which Alberto might have tried to negate that. And now he, he would be able to use the second is old. So in that he would have ogred on summon, you know? Yeah. I mean, so. we would end up with a similar board. But maybe now we could do the Aris Old and use the From Deck effect and it would have been a different game entirely. Yes, that's true. So now as uh, it looks like Alberto is in the lead, he can do whatever he wants, Ayate, get back cards, and the thing is, uh, Marco surely has a DDR, but nothing else, and yeah. Yeah, it's not a great spot because he can summon Hayate, beat yep. over the Phantom Knights monster to deny the monster on board. Exactly. Or he, yeah. Ray gets to do so that. So unless, himself. like, m they're actually... Oh, I think Alberto drew into another ogre, so <laughs> that's even harder now. Because I was thinking if uh, Marco was going to draw into a Kaiju, then maybe he would have actually been able to do a lot next turn, but the ogre in an... It's quite scary. Yes. So it looks like Alberto is getting another engage. He's yep. going to summon his Kugari and add it back. What are you going to be searching here? Uh, I mean, you want like all the interruptions. So depending if you want Shark Cannon 
or like the ego booster just if you feel safe. But we know Marco is basically out of cards, so if you play it safe but just getting rid of everything he has, uh, it should be good. So you think it's better to deny the resources that yeah. you know already? I would and say then so. you're also getting your Widow Anchor back. Yeah. Just like Shark Cannon is incredible in this matchup, so. Shark Cannon's very underrated, I think. That, that yeah. card has a lot of practical uses. Like, especially in board states like this, because he can Shark Cannon to banish, yep. and then it's going to set again, so it's a lot more proactive. Exactly. But he decides he doesn't want to do that. I mean, could still search it with uh, Shizuko and use it in the same end phase, yeah. and then get it back. Let's see how Alberto decides to go for this. Pretty it sure. looks like he's considering a Shark Cannon there. Yeah, I think he just searched. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does. He does go for that. It yeah. makes sense. So now he can get it back along with a Widow Anchor, uh, depending what he wants. Or if he wants to keep the free spells in Grave. He's going to set Widow Anchor and engage. So he That's has a spell that he searched, which he'll be able to resolve first. Okay, but yeah, Drone and Lock is picked up and Marco has seen enough. So we are going to move to game three. Uh, it yeah, Alberto didn't have the best opening at all like it was yeah. quite a weird game in that sense but it somehow got him there and now we're gonna go back to the combo uh, aspect of Marco deck let's say he, I don't think he's even signing at all going first looking at the side like he feels confident yeah. uh, his deck can always get him there and uh, he basically has nine actually with magical midbreaker field ten outs to end traps going first so we know Midbreaker is especially good against Sky Striker, so, but it's now limited, so chances yeah. that he open it are really low. So we discussed and we said Ghost Ogre was definitely kind of the greedier choice in terms of hand traps. Like if we had seen a Veiler in that game, it would have been a safer card. Yeah. But it also would have ended very differently. Mm, for sure. Do you think playing the ogre there was the right call, like because it's so much more impactful? Or? The the question mark for me was uh, Mar uh, Marco decision to not use the sold effect on someone. I think that's actually the key of uh, last game because uh, that would have changed a lot. And I'm surprised by it because he actually had a call by the grave in hand, so it's right. not like Ghost Ogre would have been the end of the world. Are you playing around Drolled and Lockbird, perhaps? Uh, not sure. I mean, it's possible, but I don't think it was... Again, you still have the call by the grave for yeah. that as well, so... Uh, I saw that Marco sided in the Dinosaur Engine. Okay. Apparently, when going second, he's most likely going for the Dino Wrestlers, but when going first, he has the option to actually summon another Overtex, which is one negation for cars like evenly matched and what not so yeah particularly Definitely. if your opponent knows that you're playing this kind of deck yeah evenly is something that they're going to want to bring in okay so oh wow i think he opened double equip spell which is oh he didn't open at all i think it's double equip spell, double call by the grave which is quite unfortunate it's not a very combo we have no yeah it is uh damn that's rough for marco Presumably, Marco is going first here. Do you see a world in which he wouldn't? Uh, I hope for him that he's not, but yeah. I don't see how. And yeah, yeah, you can see Alberto quite surprised by just Marco ending his turn. Yeah. To be fair, his end was really good. He had double effect Veiler and Ash Blossom. But yeah. Would you set the Cold Blade Grave here so that you can hit the Ray? I would definitely go for that. Yeah. But Marco is probably just tilted uh, in a sense because. And, and player, kind of, how you feel when you're playing is really important at these events, right? Yeah. As you said, now he could have negated this ray and maybe hope that he could get there, but he didn't set it. I mean, arguably, though, you can, you can think that if he gets a really good combo card, he's able to get there anyway with the call. Yeah. But... I mean, that's the thing. It's a case of, do you care more about stalling out the engine of the striker player? Yeah. Or do you care more about... But the thing is, striker is 
doesn't really interact a lot with your back rows. Yeah. So it's not like it's going to be forced or destroyed uh, 100% of the time. So yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing. We know that this striker list is playing six back row removals. Yeah. In terms of it has three mystical space typhoons, three twin yeah. twisters. But generally, I'm quite happy to set one card against striker. I, I would always set in multiples of yeah, one or three, because that way, I agree, I agree. like you want to play around a twin twister. Sure. You're not you're not going to give them that. Yeah. But I think a single called by could have been. Yeah, especially because we are we are after signing, so chances that Alberto captain uh, back row removal is very very low. So. Exactly. And as we see with his hand, it's full of interaction. Yeah. Funnily. Effect failure isn't once per turn, so he can actually play true to Cold yeah. by the Graves here. Exactly. So Alberto decides to get another Widow Anchor in the end phase, and now you can see Marco's face not looking that happy. Yeah. I mean, when you're playing against Striker, this is not the board you want to see. Yeah. He gets the extender, but... He can try and play. Yeah, he can definitely try. We have an autonomous action unit to bring Ray back as well. <laughs> yeah. And so Shizuku is currently reducing everything by 100 attack and defense. She's, she's generally the one that the striker player is wanting to sit on yeah. during the opponent's turn. Having the damage reduction is quite nice. But now you have the option with the new Sky Striker Link Master, Kaina. Yes. Which is uh, quite a nice tool. It's both very useful for uh, uh, not dying, because <laughs> you can negate attacks. And also when time is cold, of course, it's an option to gain life points. So it's definitely a really good inclusion. But yeah, it seems like Marco is just yeah. giving up. He just had some monster in pass. He doesn't think he can take it, so... This is not a good position for him. Yep. Alberto is activating Engage. So the only thing in the Striker deck that can interact with said monster is a Jamming Waves mm -hmm. targeting Alberto's own face down Spell or Trap. Yeah. Do you think it's worth doing that, or do you just attack blindly into yeah. the sad monster? I don't think I would care much, because he knows he's opponent deck and there isn't anything like huge in defense. So, no fear of morphing jar. Or yeah, anything exactly. <laughs> or, or fossil Dyna, maybe. Fossil Dyna is a pretty good card. Yeah. It, it sadly doesn't interact too well against Ray. Mm -hmm. See Hayate summoned. Let's see Hornet drones activated. It's kind of cute how Hayate and now Kaina have given the deck access to just having more than one monster on board. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that he'd summon Kaina as opposed to Kagari or Shizuku because Kaina isn't adding anything to this board, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just uh, cycling a little bit. He wants yeah. to add the engage that he's going to send with Ayata because the previous one got banished by multi-roll. So. Yes. So I think he just multi-rolled his Hayate there. Mm -hmm. And now he can just set up the single monster again to keep his interaction yeah. live. Do you think Marco has anything he can draw here to get out of this spot? I'm thinking Kaijus again, maybe, but... Mm -hmm. It seems really tough, especially because, yeah, I was about to say Share Cannon is an option, so yeah. um, with that in mind, uh, I don't think so. Was it better to just hold the Phantom Knight monster and just hope uh, to draw the The thing is, if he did, uh, he was most likely going to die to the Boros World OTK, because he was only at 5,000 life points left, so... Right. With so many searches, it, it was possible that Alberto could have got there. To get to the Boral Sword OTK, he would have needed 
He had a monster on board, and then he'd yeah. need to normal summon a ray. Yeah, have or, or a like the Aria Zero with Multiroll. Yeah. Like, you, you have a few options. So it's not impossible. But it is like, what, a four card combo? Yeah, kind of. But when you have like double engage already online, sure. it's. You can get there, you know. But I, I think you do come down to the argument of are you playing to win or are you playing not yeah, yeah, to lose? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think ever since he didn't set the call by the game, turn one, he was not playing to win. Sure. Yeah. And he has drawn for turn. Magical mid breaker field. Yeah, but he, he doesn't still have, have to enough deal monsters. with. You don't have anything to combo with again. Well, he can magical mid breaker. He can autonomous he back. Yeah. He, he can autonomous back ray, and then he can summon the junk forward. Uh, oh, sorry, summon junk forward first. Yeah. Then autonomous back ray. Yeah, make and then you have his all. Yeah. And double call by the grave. So he, it's definitely one of the best throws you could have got. But we know that shark cannon is there, and we know, as you said, that. Uh, it, double effect Veiler works against uh, Call by the Grave because he can just chain them. Yeah. And he has Ash as well, so he can go Ash, Veiler, Veiler. Yeah. Uh, d Veiler can't work. Midbreaker Field. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah. Th that's why Midbreaker Field yeah, is. Midbreaker like was probably the best draw. This could be the game deciding card. Yeah, here. that's true. Mid yeah, Midbreaker is actually, you're right. It's such an insane card. <laughs> it's so powerful. I love the artwork as well. Like you have Mobius yeah. the Frost Monarch and Breaker the Magical Warrior on it. I'll actually bring it up on screen for you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, gonna be. We we have a game again. We have a game. We have a game. <laughs> does he have enough equip spells that he's able to summon a level four? He does. He's playing eight. So unless he's headed out a bunch okay. of them, he should be fine. And Connector is really good here, yeah. right? I mean. Pretty sure this is gonna be the last turn of the duo. Like either uh, he's able to do something, or he's not gonna be. So the connector added from his old doesn't matter much. Yeah, and he has to send one of his different dimension reincarnations yeah. because he was really unfortunate drawing so many equip spells in a 60 card deck. We see. We see uh, Alberto not even sending Ash to the grave. You knew that Call by the Grave was in hand. And now it changes things up quite a little bit, but the Shark Cannon is still quite relevant. Cold Blood Grave. Again, we mentioned this slightly earlier, but yeah. how are you feeling about this card? Like, is it a card that you want to be playing in this format? I think so, because, like, uh,. It has always been a card that's good in combo decks more than in other decks because of, I mean, you just want to get end traps and then you're fine and you're good to go. But in yeah. this format in particular, you, it's also good as a pseudo trap card because you can just set it against Solomon Great, against the Thunder Dragon, and uh, by being both a card that's good in like kind of both scenarios, I think it's. It's worth maining it in almost every deck. It surely depends on what you're using, but I like the card. Zephyrus here is pretty sweet. He summons the Armageddon Knight off yeah. Ezolt. But he has the Zephyrus. Shark Cannon option as well. He does have the Shark Cannon. We don't see Shark Cannon being activated. Yeah. And now you can summon Armageddon Knight one more. Sending the Strudo, maybe? Yeah, I mean, he has he's quite a few options, so it seems like... I mean, it's a deck of options, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he also has the Overtex option. I don't know. He has a yeah. lot. He has lit, lit Does he have Overtex in at the moment? In the deck? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't have the Dino Wrestlers, so it doesn't seem like it's particularly good. And we see the Strudo being sent. Half your life points isn't too bad a deal when you're at 1600. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like. And it's kind of crazy with the Dark Warrior deck how important its graveyard becomes. Mm -hmm. How many cards are in Alberto? 
Grave, I think only two spells are there at the moment. He has reinforcement of the army yeah, and, and uh, engage. engage. Oh no, he has Hornet Trance as well. Oh, okay, so no, he's, he's online. He, he's online, but mid breaker field is yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking the battle phase he's gonna be able to. So now Sorceress is Zephyrus gonna to get the steam. steam. Yeah. Steam is such a kind of crazy card because so yep. many cards of this deck we've seen before. We've seen Zephyrus a bunch. We've seen. Armageddon Knight a bunch, but Steam, this is the first deck that I'm really seeing Steam yeah, being it's, played in. Yeah, it's usually, I mean, you can play it in these kind of decks because you don't really want to draw it, but you can have the option to just discard it or send it there. And it's such a powerful tool. It's one of the few uh, token generator cards still in the game. Yeah. And, and Lynx made it a lot better, right? Because yeah. it can only be used for Blackwing Synchros. Exactly. But that doesn't matter if your card's blue. <laughs> yeah. Yazi coming down. Yazi is very relevant. Yeah. Yazi is such an impactful card. Like, out of all of the Yang Zing cards, Yazi and Denlong are the two that have really stood the test of time. For sure. Yeah. And now uh, Marco knows where the Shark Cannon is, and I'm pretty sure he's targeting it. And I think that's a very good call. It's the only piece of interaction that the striker player has left that can be used. And it's also already been set off multi roll. So he can't bring it back. Yeah. So now he has the option to banish the Strudo. I think the Strudo is just a call here, right? Yeah. Like, n nothing else is doing anything here. Of major relevance. Yazi will activate summoning Mare Mare from deck. How much time do we have? Because they've been playing for a while, so I'm curious about that as well. I'll it's double check with our judges. Yeah, that could be relevant because you know Marco is only on 16 at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's only about four minutes left. So if uh, we said that it was going to be the last turn of the duel now we're even more convinced <laughs> of it. <laughs> it looks like it. It doesn't seem like this is going to end in three minutes. So it's either Marco is going to be able to get this 6,400 uh, life points different or Alberto is going to take it. So what does he have that will enable him to do that? So Boris Word is the card on top of my mind, but of course you have to be, you have to clear the back rows. So yes. you have to go for like Nightmare Phoenix and then uh, a Unicorn. So you have uh, you have a few options. Yeah. Because like otherwise you're just gonna lose as soon as you enter battle phase. And the fact that he has a second call by the grave uh, is now relevant for uh, the ray in grave. So exactly. He, Being he able to stop the ray activating is very important. Yeah. But he does need to find the damage here, and that's that's all he cares about at this stage. Yeah. Finding damage and figuring out how to dismantle this Sky Striker player's back row. And looking at the deck list, I'm actually now seeing that he is not playing Unicorn, which is surprising. So he's we've not hit one Widow Anchor. Yeah. He has no Unicorn to climb into. No. Because now it would have been the obvious choice to get rid of a second back row. Yeah. But now he's gonna be tough. It's quite surprising that he's not playing it. I feel like it's such a generic card. Uh, it's just a case of space, right? Yeah. When I was trying similar decks to this one, the extra deck space was the number one issue, honestly. Yeah. It's always the challenge with combo decks, is finding a 15-card extra that gives you as much flexibility as possible, yeah. right? You have your set slots, which are just for your combo, and then you have things like Phoenix, which are problem solvers, yeah. but I guess you can only fit so many of them. Because I'm pretty sure the new Bryonic text is only about monsters, right? Or uh, we can I quickly will. check it. Yes. Because he got on a of course. And
Uh, it's just cards your opponent controls. Oh. So it's just the... Uh, once per turn, or...? Let me sure. Yes. He's a named once per turn, I believe. Because then that's the... He needs to have enough cards to send. We see the Marimara leaving the field. He's hovering over to Brianna. Yeah, uh, Here exactly. comes Brianna. Because the Brian Brianna then is the the way you win this game. Yeah, because now we can also climb our Sorceress, our Link Rebo, and our Phoenix into yeah. a Boral Sword, right? Exactly. And then we have loads of damage. So... We have three cards. Yeah. So we discard two, target to two sets, keep called by the Grave so we can clear Ray. Yep. Seems like a plan. I like it. And I think this is kind of a problem for Sky Striker in the format, is that the graveyard-based decks have so much stuff that they're able to do. Yeah. That was the issue, essentially, why we didn't see Sky Striker getting it in the, like, Forbidden list, but yep. we saw uh, that it was just played less and less, so... So he's targeting the Shizuku, and he is targeting the other card. Oh yeah, I don't think he, mid he can. I don't think he can target. I don't right? think so. No. With, yeah. So, so he'll, presumably he'll just target the two sets. Yeah, the two yeah. sets then, which was honestly my initial idea anyway. So okay. they go back to the end. Uh, I don't think there was any of those set from multi roll because otherwise they would have still been banished. And I just realized. Yeah. We can we can't affect failure. Never mind. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh no, affect failure is gonna come down. But it's no, because now only it's main uh, yeah, it's just the bottles word. He's gonna use the cold by the grave on the ray. Exactly. And he's he's free to do whatever he wants. Yeah. He it's is getting very tight on time now. He does need to start getting himself into the battle phase. He does because there are only about forty seconds left. And these wow. are high pressure, high pressure situations. Yes. Looks like we're moving to battle phase. Reading mit magical midbreaker. I assume he's checking to see and if he has any chance enough. to Valor here. Because then he gains 1500, he loses like 300, I think. There should be three spells in grave. And then that's 27. He'll gain 750, right? Yeah, it's more than enough. Because yeah. he's uh, 27, then Bryonic is 23. Should be five thousand, and let's just check the math real quick. Checking graveyards. Um, yeah, as time is about to be called, uh, Marco had a very long turn, so the judges thought he was playing just a little bit too slow. So we have been informed that he received a slow play warning, and three minutes of extra time have been uh, conceded. So this changes things a lot because now the multi roll is actually going to bring value back. It does. If the game doesn't end here, but it could be enough because, like, he deals. So there, how many spells are in grave? Three. So he deals 27 with the first attack. Then it's 5,000, and yeah, it's more than enough to win yep. the duel. So he just needs to find it, and uh, the three minutes will not matter. And let's just see it. I can't believe this, honestly, but let's see if Marco is going to be the winner. I think uh, Alberto realized it from his smile. And yeah. yeah. Yep, we are reading Boral Sword. <laughs> Such a powerful card in Such this Such a good card, yeah. It, it gives these aggressive decks such a kind of diverse tool. Yeah. Like, you know, you just summon 6,000 damage out of nowhere. And it's kind of interesting because we saw Borloid prevalent for a very long time mm -hmm. as kind of the premium, right, premium Link 4 to go into that wasn't Firewall Dragon because Firewall and Borloid served very different purposes. Yeah. I know it seems like Boral Sword has very much replaced Borloid. Exactly. I mean, the only concern is the Thunder Dragon matchup, because yes. there you want to be able to steal their fusion monsters, but in every other matchup, Borderlord's word is better, and you can see Alberto just smiling, not even believing. I don't believe it. He's showing his hand with double Vader, as you can see, yeah. and he's in disbelief.
But one of magical mid breaker fields yeah. foiling the double. <laughs> and shake, so Marco takes the match in incredible fashion. So let's just go to the post match discussion and see what happened. Okay, so wow. we had Sky Striker versus yeah. 60 card Dark Warrior. Classic matchup. It's changed a lot since yeah. the Forbidden Unlimited list. We saw game one, we saw the Dark Warrior player going mm -hmm. first. He managed to end on a board of his Photon Dragon yeah. Link. Or yeah, 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 the Photon XC's Blast monster. Dragon. Yeah. Yes, and then he also had his Amorphage Goliath. Goliath. Yeah. And so that just shut down Alberto from doing anything, right? Yeah, because he can't special summon from the extra deck. He can't target or destroy their, his monsters, so yeah. there is nothing he can do in game one. Uh, then we move to game two, and it's uh, a little bit more of a grind. Uh, Alberto opens terribly, and he's also uh, hit by a drone lockbird. But then he fights back with his Antrops. He had Ghost Ogre, Ash, and uh, Widow Anchor. And uh, somehow he takes the game in the next uh, turn. Yep. Uh, and game three is the shocker. Like, <laughs> what happened? I'm, I, I don't even know. Because, like, it's the other way around. Alberto goes um, Marco, Marco goes, goes first. first. Stalls out entirely. Yeah. No combo at all. Two equip spells yeah. in hand. And two Cold by the Grave. Yeah. But then he decides, surprising us, to not set a Cold by the Grave to play around Ray. Uh, and I don't know what happened. It seems like Al um, Alberto was just gonna win. He had the full striker board, full end with like double Veiler, Ash, double uh, Widow Anchor. But then when all op was gone, magical mid breaker field. <laughs> Top deck, one off. Top deck, just bam. one off. On the bam. board, bam. GG. And yeah, yeah. GG. Cut over to Ollie for a player interview with Marco. Definitely, let's go. Here we are again on the main event stage. I actually got both players here because, like they said, going into this match, they are friends. That was one of the craziest matches we've seen. There were I've I've read like Chi Chi like good game at the start of the match of, of the third duel, and half of the Twitch chat was like, yeah, this game is over. And then suddenly we saw one of the craziest comebacks. So what was that like for you? Um, thing is, uh, I played all my uh, game uh, around his field spell. Problem is, uh, since I was going second, I side out Eagle Booster to make room for hand traps. And in the grind game, I realized that he just needed the fill spell, which is a one off right now after the ban list, to kill me because I had the double Veiler and three right. anchors. Then he, he dropped that and I was done. <laughs> right. So you've won a YCS before, and I don't think you went undefeated in that YCS. No. So, what do you do after you're taking a loss like this one? How do you recover from this and then make sure that for the rest of the day you're gonna stay fresh in your mind and you can still crush your enemies? Actually, I'm the one who won. Oh, so <laughs> com <laughs> completely confused right now. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, let's start over. Let's start over. Uh, I'm gonna bring this question right back to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you how do you come back from this? Uh, I mean, it's fine. I lost to one of my friends, so I'm cool. Uh, he played really well this game. So I'm fine. I mean, the tournament is still really long, so I just keep focusing on the tournament and just go on. All right. Let's rewind this a little bit. You won this match. What an exciting match. I saw every little thing of this. Okay. So how does it feel after that, f after that second round? You're now undefeated, of course. Um, what's it going to be like the rest of the day? What's your expectation? Yeah, I, I don't expect anything because like, the tournament is still long. I still have to play nine rounds. I still have to take one game at a time. Focus on each game and still have to want any any game left. So I hear a lot of players, especially like uh, players that have been very accomplished in the past, they set a goal like I want to be in the top cut, and then I see what happens there. Do you have like a minimum goal for this weekend, or like you said, one game at a time, and no matter what happens? Yeah, no matter what happens, I just wanna uh, play as better as possible. Just try to win everything. Uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right. Yeah. What about you? What's your minimum goal for this weekend? Uh, same. I just keep playing each tur each round, single game, and then I will see how it's going the end of the day, and then we'll think about tomorrow. You guys, of course, you're talking to each other in between rounds. You're both in the same player group. You're both in the same team. What difference does it make to be at a large event like this one if you're coming together with your friends, if you're in a team? Is it a big difference, or could you also win an event like this if you're just on your own? No, no, I, I could never win just any tournament with just by, by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh seems like to be a sport, like right, a, right. a single a single man sport, but it's not. It's like a really team sport based. 
So yeah, I would never be here with all my friends. Right. So, so what exactly are they doing? They're giving you advice in between rounds, they help you out with the deck. Are they going to help build you up? I guess you're not too down right now, but generally speaking, if you take a, if you take a loss, are they talking to you and helping you out? Yeah, I think that's really important. Like, uh, I have many friends that just, after they lose one round, they just became uh, super sad. And that's, it's super important to have friends just to support you at that point. Otherwise, you just completely uh, just throw up all the other games and then you just lose the tournament in this way. All right, so I talked to a lot, a lot of players who have been before. Most of them say you need to be prepared. You guys are saying, or you seem to be in agreement, you need a good team, that also helps. Is there another secret hint for somebody who's like about to play in their first event? What would be your secret advice for them to do as well as possible? Uh, it's hard to say, like, I try to remember me, like, <laughs> six, six years ago, yeah, uh, competing at my first YCS. Uh, maybe for the first tournament, my advice would be, I don't actually know, just play as much as possible, enjoy the game as much as you can, and just play the game you, we all love. All right, I guess you're in the same boat. I see a lot of movement behind the camera. That means that we actually have pairings for the next round already. Guys, uh, please collect your stuff again. You need to be uh, get ready. Don't forget to decide deck. We've seen that a couple of times after the feature match. So very, very soon we're going to be back with yet another feature match. I'm now like huddling into the coverage area, pick a feature match for you guys. And then we're going to be back very, very soon with Weisses Düsseldorf 1. And I'm going to tell you why it's called Weisses Düsseldorf 1 in case you just tune in at the start of the next round. So see you very, very soon.